Gardening's easy when you're a know-it-all like me, but a lot of beginning and younger gardeners just don't know where to start. So today, for you beginning gardeners, for you newbies out there, I'm gonna tell you the five garden tools that you absolutely have to have before you get started out there in the yard. Now the first one is a good pair of pruning shears. And when I say good, this applies to all the garden tools you're gonna buy. Don't go for the cheap stuff. If you buy cheap stuff, yeah, it'll cost you less money, but it'll make more work for you. They won't last very long. And then you'll just go out and have to buy yourself another pair. So get yourself a quality tool. The first tool I'm showing you here is absolutely essential. These are hand pruners. You use them for grooming your plants. You can use them for cutting branches up to about three quarters inch in diameter. You can use them for removing spent flowers from your plants. The kind of pruners that I want you to get is what we call bypass pruners. And that's because it has these curved blades that when it cuts, they move past each other like scissors do. And it makes a nice, sharp, clean cut and doesn't mash the branch. Between the handles, you're gonna see a spring shock absorber. That does two things. One, when you close them to cut something, you're not gonna be wrapping your knuckles against each other, because that's really painful. The second thing it does is when you open your hands back up, you don't have to pull the blades back open the spring will just open these up and fill your hand, and so it's a lot less fatigue on your hand. The third feature I like to see is hand pruners that are shaped to the contours of your hand, because that's gonna be a lot less tiring to your hand when you use it. Now the next tool you really gotta have is a good trowel. So this is what you're gonna be using to plant most of the things in your garden. This particular one, I use in my garden, I've been using it for five years. I love it, I wouldn't be without it. It has all these different features that I really like. First of all, it has a wood handle. Feels good in your hand. Also, on cold days, it's hard to really work with a metal tool without a glove on, but with this, it's very comfortable. Second thing is, it has a nice big blade to it. And if you're trying to scoop out dirt to make a hole, it's gonna do the job pretty quickly because this thing can take out a lot of soil. One feature that this particular trowel that I'm holding has now that you might wanna look for is on the front blade of this, it is sharpened, it's kind of beveled. What that does, it makes a cutting edge. So let's say you're cutting down through the soil and you're just trying to make a nice big hole for a plant quickly and you find roots under there for maybe a shrub or a tree, you just pound this thing down, it'll go right through the root and it makes digging and excavating a hole just a lot quicker and with a lot less effort. Is this American Gothic enough for you? This is the third essential tool you'll need in your yard. This is a garden shovel. This is for planting big stuff and digging big holes. If you wanna dig a hole quickly, you wanna make sure that you're getting a shovel and not a spade. A spade is flat, it's for digging trenches. You want something that's rounded like this. It penetrates the soil quickly and allows you to dig a nice big hole without too much effort. One thing you'll also notice that this end of the blade has a rolled edge and that's a good place for putting your foot when you're stomping down on this thing trying to dig a large hole. Now unless you bought a house in the middle of the Sahara, your yard is probably gonna have trees. So you're gonna to need to get the common yard rake. Unlike the other tools I've showed you before, you don't have to spend a whole lot of money on something like this. You'll notice this one does not have a metal head to it. It has a plastic head. That's just fine. When I look for a rake like this, I look for one with the biggest head I can find because that's gonna allow me to sweep it over the lawn and with far less passes, I'm gonna be able to collect all the leaves. Gardens have plants, and you may be aware that plants require water. So how do you get that water from your house to the plant? You need a garden hose. What you need to do is go out to the garden center and look for a hose, I would say 50 feet minimum. Even better, get one that is 75 feet long. That way you don't have to spend your entire afternoon running across the lawn connecting all these different hoses that are gonna leak and spray water everywhere. 
Also make sure that the hose is at least 5 8 inch wide. 3 quarters of an inch is even better because that's going to allow you to put more water at the base of the plant so the watering will take a lot less time. Now there's two different kinds of materials that hoses are generally made of, vinyl and rubber. I prefer a rubber hose because it lasts longer, it's stronger, it's flexible, and it's pliable. Vinyl is what most people get because it's cheaper, but it doesn't last very long. And one of the worst things about it is after a while, it starts to kink up all over the place. And you're out there in the yard, sweating, trying to water all your plants. The water keeps shutting off because the dang hose keeps kinking up. So buy a rubber hose. It's a good investment. Two years from now, you'll be glad you did.